सब्जेक्ट जोग्रफी क्लास सेवन चैप्टर फोर एयर प्रेशर वी आर अवेयर दैट द एनवल ऑफ एयर अराउंड दी अर्थ इज कॉल्ड एटमोसफियर द एयर इन द एटमोसफियर एक्सर्ट्स प्रेशर ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द अर्थ so we can say that air pressure or atmospheric pressure is the pressure exerted by air due to this air pressure various phenomena like storms precipitation etc occur in the atmosphere there are variations in air pressure air pressure is not uniform on all places of the earth surface air pressure keeps on changing from time to time the altitude of a region temperature of the air and amount of water vapor in the air are some factors which influence the air pressure let us now consider altitude of the region and air pressure the proportion of dust in the air water vapor heavy gases etc is higher in the air closer to the surface of the earth this proportion decreases with increasing altitude that means as we move higher and higher from the surface of the earth the air becomes thinner and thinner here you can see the various layers of on the surface above the surface of the earth so as you move upwards the air becomes thinner and thinner as a result the air pressure decreases with increasing altitude altitude is height above so this means as you move higher above the surface of the earth air pressure decreases as air becomes thinner and thinner now let's see what is the relation between air temperature and air pressure try this take a flying lantern tie an approximately 5 meter long thread to the flying lantern so that you can bring the lantern down whenever required After carefully reading the instructions given on the package of the lantern open it and light the candle placed in it observe what happens did the flying lantern start ascending immediately after the candle was lit your answer would be no it took a while and the geographical explanation for this is the air in the flying lantern gets heated once the candle is lit the hot air expands becomes lighter and starts moving up therefore the lantern is also lifted up towards the sky in nature too a similar phenomenon occurs temperature and air pressure are closely related so wherever the temperature is high the air pressure is low as the temperature rises the air gets heated expands and becomes lighter this lighter air in the vicinity of the earth surface starts moving up towards the sky as a result the air pressure in such areas decreases now let us study about temperature zones and pressure belts temperature zones and pressure belts are interrelated to each other but the latitudinal extent of the temperature zones is much larger while pressure belts are narrower see figure 4.2a and figure 4.2b for example the temperate zone extends from which latitudes just check figure 4.2 a yes the temperate zone extends from 23 degree 
to 30 minutes to 66 degree 30 minutes. Compared to this, the air pressure belt has limited extent. So you can see it is generally up to 10 degree parallel. The uneven distribution of temperature influences the distribution of air pressure too. This leads to the formation of low and high pressure belts horizontally between the equator and the poles. So see figure 4.2b carefully. You will see that between the latitudes 5 degree north and 5 degree south, we have the equatorial low pressure belt formed. Between 25 and 35 degree north and south latitudes, we have the mid latitudinal high pressure belt. Between 55 degree and 65 degree north and south latitudes, we have subpolar low pressure belt. And between 80 degree to 90 degree north and south, we have the polar high pressure belt. So this way, there are various pressure belts uh, which are formed on the surface of the earth. So let us now learn more about pressure belts on the earth's surface. The heat received from the sun is uneven in different regions. Equatorial low pressure belt. Now, as the heat received from the sun is uneven in different regions, the distribution of temperature is also uneven from the equator to the poles. So, let's see. The temperature zones are created because of the uneven distribution of temperature. You have already studied about temperature zones in your previous class. Now, let us study about pressure belts. Equatorial belt is formed between 5 degree north and 5 degree south latitudes. The sun rays are perpendicular between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. So the temperature is higher in this region. Hence air in this region gets heated, expands, becomes lighter and moves towards the sky as mentioned earlier. So as this process operates continuously, a low pressure belt gets formed in the central part of this region between which parallels? Yes, 5 degree north and 5 degree south. So we can see that the equatorial low pressure belt gets formed between 5 degree north and 5 degree south parallels of latitudes. The second pressure belt you are studying is mid-latitudinal high pressure belts. The heated air becomes lighter, starts ascending and after reaching higher altitudes moves towards the yes, polar region that is towards the north and the south pole. Due to low temperatures at the higher altitudes, the air cools down and becomes heavier. This heavier air descends down in both the hemispheres in the region between 25 degree to 35 degree parallels. This leads to the formation of high pressure belts in these parallels of latitudes where in both the hemispheres. This air is dry, hence the region does not get rainfall. Consequently, most of the hot deserts on the earth are found in this region. So, you can See figure 4.2b for this mid-latitudinal high pressure belt. It extends between the latitudes 25 degree to 35 degree both northern and southern hemispheres.
the third type of pressure belts we are studying today is subpolar low pressure belts due to earth's curvature the area between two parallels get reduced as we move towards the poles so you can see as we are moving towards the poles what is happening to the area between the parallels is getting reduced the earth is in the form of a curve so this results in lesser friction of the air with the earth's surface air in this region is thrown out because of this reduced friction and also because of the earth's rotational motion this leads to the development of a low pressure belt this condition is observed in which latitudes you can see yes 55 degree and 65 degree parallels in both the hemispheres we can see mid latitudinal high pressure belts between 25 to 35 degree and above that in the northern hemisphere 55 degree to 65 degree we have subpolar low pressure belts and similarly in the southern hemisphere also 55 degree to 65 degree subpolar low pressure belts are formed the fourth one and the last pressure belts that you are studying is polar high pressure belt in both the polar regions the temperature is how much mostly 0 degree celsius throughout the year hence the air is cold as a result high pressure belts get formed you learned at the equator because of high temperature low pressure belts opposite will happen in polar regions due to low temperature high pressure belts they generally occupy the area between 80 degree and 90 degree parallels in both the hemispheres the duration and intensity of sun rays varies during particular periods of the year in both the hemispheres so to sum it up we can say that the location of the temperature pressure zones and the pressure belts depend on the sun's heat and they also vary this changes of order 5 degree to 7 degree towards north in uttarayan and 5 degree to 7 degree south in dakshinayan this is called the oscillation of pressure belts now that you have you are well acquainted with what are pressure belts let's see the effects effects the air pressure has the following effects first origin of winds winds are originated because of the air pressure second generation of storms so storms too are a cause of air pressure and third convectional type of rain the rain that mostly is received in the equatorial region now what is convectional type of rain you convectional rainfall occurs when the energy of the sun heats the surface of the earth causing water to evaporate and uh, to form water vapor so convectional type of rain is the result of air pressure isobars the line that joins the places of equal pressure on the map is called an isobar so in a map an isobar is a line that will be drawn to show the air pressure and mostly the air pressure which is equal in a particular area so the line that joins the places of equal pressure on the map is called an isobar let's have a look at a map okay so you can see in your textbook page 19 the distribution of annual average pressure in the world is shown and the value of air pressure is always in millibars always remember 
air pressure is measured in units of millibars. For this, an instrument called barometer is used. You can see figure 4.3, a picture of barometer. The air pressure at the earth's surface is measured with this instrument. So, that's all about air pressure. Do read the textbook. Keep learning. Stay safe. Thank you.